Bill Skarsgård stars in the odd and hubristic semi-true life tale of Sweden's notorious bank robber and personality, Clark, in this new Netflix limited series. Clark follows the man behind the expression, the Stockholm Syndrome, on his life journey as he fooled all of Sweden to fall in love with him, despite several counts of drug trafficking, attempted murder, assault, theft, and dozens of bank robberies. So at the beginning of every episode, we get a visual reminder that this series is based on truth and lies, which is something important to remember as the fictional account of one of the most controversial personalities in contemporary Swedish history plays out right in front of us. Skarsgård plays the title role, and he really creates a believably narcissistic person who is a massive charmer, but also ultimately only out for himself. This limited series is six episodes, with each of them being close to or just over an hour long. Now, the storytelling is quick, and it's almost ADHD-infused, so it's always keeping us on our toes, but the overall length of the story does become evident as the series goes along. This is creatively presented with several different aspect ratios and even with the color grading and saturation. When we get flashbacks to Clark's childhood, the aspect ratio typically goes to a square format and it's presented in black and white. Other times we'll get news footage that is almost square but presented in color with a lot of film grain placed on it just to give it an older look. I like how the series footage is interspersed with real life footage at different points too, especially when it pertains to some of Clark's more widely publicized events. And some sequences take the colors and they just over oversaturate them, giving it a very bright and vibrant feel. Now, the series does a good job of taking us through Clark's life, from the moment he's born until he's an aging adult. And we get to see how some of his childhood and his family life shaped a bit of his outlook on life and then his personality. But then we also get to see how he interacts with friends, how his mind works, and how he ultimately is a very restless person, never content with just being still. He was constantly getting into trouble, whether that be trespassing with some light breaking and entering, to running drugs, maybe escaping multiple prisons, robbing countless banks, or even being involved in assaults. One of his bank robberies in particular led to what was termed a Stockholm Syndrome, where his charm and his personality were able to win over hostages in a bank robbery, but also infatuate the public with his wit and finesse. But in this event, even though the term is coined there, we watch Skarsgård manipulate and enamor just about everyone around him. In the series, Clark knows how to read people. And despite him being pretty rude and very self-centered, people still fawned over him, drawn to his words and his charisma. Now, as charming as Clark can be, he's a pretty reprehensible character. Skarsgård does a wonderful job at creating the character that draws us in, even though he can be annoying and fairly transparent when it came to motivations. And as the series went along, I found myself liking Clark less and less, mostly due to his continued poor decision-making ability. He's self-sabotaging, but still able to elicit some sympathy despite the massively apparent flaws. The show comes off through a lot of this as a sort of bad drug trip, where so much is frenetic and then stressful. Now sure, the situations themselves are anxiety-filled because of the actions and behaviors, but then the actual presentation, it's so varied in style that some of it feels out of place. There's a scene in one of the early episodes that transitions into this anime type of style. And while it looked great, this was completely out of the blue, and it just felt misguided. But this was also never used again within the show, making it seem like it was just some kind of random idea that they went with on a whim and then maybe just decided to keep it in. There's also one other time where animation came into play, but this time it was more of a psychedelic type of illustration. And again, the art style wasn't the issue. It was just oddly placed within the show. Sometimes there were a few fantastical sequences where we watch Clark having a fantasy of acting out his thoughts, but then we're snapped right back into reality. It's fun and fit within the story, but there was also a point in the latter portion of the series where I was sure we were watching just another fantastical situation play out, and I just kept waiting for reality to kick in. But to my surprise, what we watched was the reality. Ah, it was shocking, and then it was disturbing. It was one of those moments that reminds you that as charming as Clark can be, He's really not a good guy. There's a bunch of comedy within this show where a lot of it works, but some of it just doesn't. And in those moments, either a situation was overplayed or the content was just forced, making the humor have the opposite effect on me by turning me off instead of making me chuckle or become more enamored or endeared with the character. Now, if sex and nudity within a show are a concern for you, you're probably going to want to stay away from this series because there's quite a bit of both. There's this ongoing gag with Clark and sex that is pretty funny, but the show also uses all the situations to show how self-absorbed Clark is and how despite what he may say, his actions show that his wants are the centermost of his concerns. 
And while the majority of the series is focused on Clark, we do get glimpses of how his behaviors affect those around him and how they're drawn to him, even unwittingly. I think this is a powerful character study to show how people look for connections with others and how that longing can then be manipulated. There's one relationship that Clark has that I really enjoyed. It's between Clark and this police investigator, Tommy Lindstrom. Now, there's a point at the very end of the series where we clearly see how intertwined their stories actually are, and then how it impacts one of them in a sad but profound way. It adds humanity to the story where people are treated as disposable. So overall, Clark is an engaging look at a charming but dysfunctional person who was able to flatter and seduce a nation despite being a crook and a thief. The storytelling is chaotic at times, mirroring Clark's own persona. And while the overall narrative is enjoyable, some of the episodes and elements could have been shaved down to tell a more concise story. I also wasn't totally thrilled with some of the animation, as it just felt misplaced, even though it looked wonderful. Now, I was completely unfamiliar with Clark Olofsson, so even though this was based on truth and lies, I was intrigued and entertained, especially thanks to the psychopathic and hubristic performance by Bill Skarsgård. There's a ton of sex and nudity, an enormous amount of profanity, and a bunch of violence. I give Clark three and a half out of five couches. Now, Skarsgård is probably most notable for his portrayal of Pennywise in It, but do you have a favorite performance of his from any of his other works? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.